Here you have another example of a root locus. In this example, you'll notice that the transfer function is a bit more complicated than the previous examples. We have a total of six poles and one zero only. So n minus m, the number of poles minus the number of zeros, is six minus one, that is five. We now have five asymptotes that will take some of the poles to infinity. And you also have four poles at negative four. This is going to be an interesting root locus to draw. Let's just start by calculating the asymptotes that will take this poles to infinity. We all know the formula at this point is 180 plus 360 q minus one divided by n minus m. And in this case, q goes from one to five. So I'm going to skip that step. There is very simple math. I'm going to write here all the values of theta for all five asymptotes. After calculating all the angles, we see that we have an angle at 36, one at negative 36, one at 108, one at a negative 108, and you have that one at 180 degrees. So this is symmetric with respect to the real axis. Now let's place the poles and zeros on the S plane. We have first a pole at zero, that one, let's place it here. We have a pole at negative two. And we have four poles at negative four. So this is times four. And you have a zero at negative one around here. We now have five asymptotes. Let's calculate the centroid of the asymptote. The centroid is the sum of poles minus the sum of zeros divided by n minus m. In this case, sum of poles, we have negative four, negative four, negative four, negative four, in this one, minus two plus zero, and minus the sum of zeros, which is simply negative one divided by n minus m, in this case, 5. This gives the centroid of the asymptote at negative 3.4. So the centroid of the asymptote is around here, negative 3.4. All right, now what do you have? We have one asymptote going up at an angle of 36 degrees. Here it is. We have, let me write here, 36 degrees. We have another one going at 108 degrees, so around here, 108 degrees. We have one at 180, so here it is, 180. And here we have the negative 36 degrees, and this one is the negative 108 degrees. All five asymptotes, and again, here is the 180. Now, where is the root locus? The root locus is to the left of a not number of poles and zeros. So let's do the count. The count here is zero. Count here between zero and the negative one is one. Between negative one and negative two, the count is two. Between 2 and 4, the count is 3. And to the left of 4, the count is 7. Where is the root locus? Well, the root locus is between this 2, between this 2, and to the left of negative 4. Now, here we have 3. We just crossed 4 poles at negative 4 that gives the total up to seven. So now knowing that there is a root locus between this pole and this zero, it's clear that this pole will migrate to that zero. Knowing that there is a root locus between this two, one of the four here and negative two, this poles will have to come together and break away. So here we have the asymptotes. One goes up, 
and the other one will go downwards. That's the only solution. One goes upwards following the 36 degree asymptote, the other one goes downwards following the negative 36 degree asymptote. And here we have a hypothetical breakaway point. We don't need to worry about that one right now. So one of the poles will go there. This pole also comes here, and they go, and they go to plus minus infinity. We still have three poles left here. We only used one. So what happens to the other three poles? Well, one goes to negative 180. Because you have the asymptote here ready, and you know that there is a pole, there is a root locus on the left of this pole, because the count here is odd. So now one of these poles goes to negative infinity. One of them is going to this point and break away to meet the other pole at negative 2. What happens to the other two? Well, they cannot go to the left, they cannot go to the right, because that part of the real axis is already occupied by other poles. And then here we still have two asymptotes to use. So the only solution is that they break away where they are, and they become complex conjugate numbers. So the only solution is for one to go up following the 108 degrees asymptote, and the other one needs to go downwards following the complement of this asymptote here. One goes up, one goes down. And this is the completed root locus. So let's recap. This pole goes to this zero because there is a root locus between them. And this is because we have an odd number here of one. So the pole needs to go to the zero. There is no other solution. There is a root locus between one of the four poles that are here and this pole. So we need now to fill out the it's part of the real axis which means that these poles will need to come together, break away. One uses the 36 degree asymptote, the other one uses the negative 36 degree asymptote to go to plus minus infinity. This means that we used one out of the four poles that are located at negative four. We know that to the left of that negative four, we also have a root locus. The count here is a odd number. We have the asymptote ready going to negative infinity, so one of the three remaining poles needs to go to negative infinity. There is no other solution. We have two poles left. They cannot go to the right, they cannot go to the left, because both sides are occupied by other poles. So they can only break away and go to plus minus infinity following the asymptotes. And this is now the completed root locus. Quite an interesting one, I would say.